Dixon. I'm one of the trainers with the Thrive Royal Cancer Foundation. I do a class on Monday evenings from 6.30 to 7.30 at the TriPoint on St. Mary's. So today I'm just going to show you a few things that you can do at your home to get a nice good workout in. Most of them will be body weight, but some of these things you can find in your home. I am a strength and performance coach, personal trainer. I uh, have a pretty wide array of uh, resume people I work with. So I'm going to try to keep everything as simple as I can, but as challenging as it can be. So we'll go ahead and start. I want to start with a, about a five minute warm up to get your body ready for all the movements that we're going to try to do. So the first thing we're going to do, we're going to do uh, arm swings. So the first few will come across the body. We'll do this for a few seconds, for about 30 seconds or so. As you swing towards the body, you want your palms facing down, you'll come across the body. And as you swing out, the palms will face up. So we'll do this for about 15 more seconds. For something like this, it doesn't matter how your feet are on the ground. You can have a staggered stance or a uh, standard stance. Now we're gonna switch from high to low. With this one, the hands can stay in a neutral position. Swing as high as you can and as far back as you can coming down. Then after this, we're going to transition to warm up the hips, the knees, and the ankles. Come down on one knee. For the hips, we want to stretch what's called the hip flexor in the front here. So we'll have one knee down, one knee up, and we're just going to shift the body forward. And we'll come back. What we're going to do here is work on the flexibility and the mobility of that hip. So for here, let's do about 12. As you do these, you should feel the stretch here in the hip area. If you're really tight, you'll actually feel it all the way down to the knee. We'll do two more and then switch sides. to standing position. This one, um, <coughs> excuse me, we're going to do a body weight squat into this one. What I would like for you to try to do is get your feet as wide as your shoulders. And for this one, we're going to do a progression of depth. What I mean by that is each rep, try to go in a little bit deeper into it. When you do these, the toes can be slightly out, but for the most part, you can keep them forward hands out in front. So for the first one, come about halfway down, push up, and just try to gauge a little bit lower on the next one. And back up. Back up. We'll do five more. as you can. Keep your chest tall as you go down. Let the hips and the knees and the ankles do the work. One more. Right. I feel pretty warm, so let's get started. For your first exercise, I'm going to show you a few different things. This is a gallon of tea, but it can be water. And if you let some of it out, that's fine too. This will actually give a bit of instability in the exercise. <coughs> so, the first exercise we do is called a lateral lunge. And all we're using this for is for added weight. So, 
The exercise will require you to step either to the right or to the left. I'll start to the left. And as you step out, you want to land with the toe forward. This leg will stay straight, the leg that didn't move. You sit into it as deep as you can and come back up, back to the start position. So a modified version of that obviously would be without the weight, as deep as you can get into it. And back up. With the weight, you'll just hold the jug actually center to the body so that as you step out, it will be in the middle. Sit into it, back up. If you can, actually let the bottom of the jug tap and that'll actually give you a good consistent depth. We do 10 on this side. Switch sides. If you need to, like with the warm up, use each rep to get a little bit deeper into it. Good strong push back up. Any side, a modified version, another modified version of that, if you want to use the weight or not, you'll actually step out about half the distance you just stepped, bend both knees, but keep most of your weight on the dominant leg, tap back to the start. So both knees are bent, tap here, all the weight is actually going to this leg, back up to the start. Back. We'll use this again. So now we'll work on <laughs> uh, your back muscles, real delts, and some bicep. We do what's called a bent over row. There's several ways to do it. I'll show you two or three. The main one we'll do is if you buy a couch or a counter, uh, we'll start with the weight in the right hand, left hand on the couch, counter, or chair, knee slightly bent, back as flat as you can get it, and we're in a row. As you pull, think of there's a string on your elbow pulling towards the ceiling. And you should feel your back muscles kick in when you do that. Modified version, of course, is anything you can use with a weight, 10 pounds or whatever is a good way for you to feel it. Or you could just use your arm. If you use a no weight, you probably could use or do more reps, that's fine. But something with a little bit of weight on it, we'll keep it around 12, 10 to 12 reps. For this one, I'll do 12. stagger stance so that when you pull whatever you're using won't hit your knee or you can come a little wider either one next exercise we'll do is called a split squat Bulgarian split squat or it has another name but I can't think of right now the modified version I'll show of it will come 
to a split stance. Feet will be like the squat, where they are about shoulder width apart and probably a foot to a foot and a half away from each other. Uh, with no weight, we'll put both hands out in front. Now as you lower, you want to keep your weight on the front leg. This is more to help with balance. So we'll come down, push back up with that forward, the dominant leg, and back up. What I'm going to do for my regular vertical, I'm going to use this couch behind me, or if you have a trash can or a stool, anything that's probably about six, anything between six, 12 inches should work. And I'm going to use my jug again for weight. So I'm going to put my, whatever you have, whatever hand your weight is in, that's the leg that we're going to prop up. And you want to get about, whatever you're standing on, probably about no more than three feet. Once again, the leg that's propped up will be the leg used to balance. The leg doing the work will be the leg that's still on the ground. We're going to bring our jug here or here. If you bring it up, it'll be more challenging for the core, but it'll also help you stay more upright as opposed to the jug being held low. You will tend to lean, lean forward a little bit, but there's nothing wrong with that as long as you do try to focus on keeping a tall chest and a forward head. I'm going to go here to probably to do the most challenging one. If, and for a little added challenge for your forearm grip, you can actually hold the jug this way as opposed to this way. I'll probably fluctuate back and forth. Let's start with 10. We'll do 10 for each leg. Exercises like these help if you can find a fixed position on the wall or on the floor, and that'll help keep your balance also. If you can, the leg that's on the couch can get all the way down and tap the floor with it, by all means do. If you only feel comfortable coming halfway down, that's fine too, because we're also working on balance with this exercise. All right. So now we're going to switch sides. Try to maintain that two to three foot distance away from whatever you're propping your foot on. Make sure you have your balance before you start. Nice and tall. All right, let's get started. exercise we're going to do push-ups. I'll show three different versions, two modified, one standard. If you have a couch or a counter or anything elevated, that's one way to do this modified version. So to get started here, make sure your hands are firmly on the arm if you're using a couch or a counter. Nice and firm, just outside of the shoulder. We're gonna get our feet planted. Do the feet about the same width as the hands. Um, you don't want to have too much, or if you can help it, you don't want to have where your body is what we call height. So after you get your hands and feet in position, lower your hips. As you lower your hips, you'll feel your body shift forward. You want to get in a straight position from there. As much as you can, brace to help keep the body straight. Then we'll lower. If you can, chest will touch the couch or counter. We're going to push back up. 
This is one modified version. The other version is on the ground. If you have a mat, we can use that, or your regular floor, however you like to. We'll come to the floor. If you have a mat, it actually will help you to measure out how wide you want your hands, because I usually will line my pinky right on the edges. And we'll do these from the knees, using the same concept of body straightness and tautness that we use on the edge of the couch. We'll bring your feet back, or your knees back, to where you're in a quad position. Shift your weight forward until your hips, or until you've created a straight line between the shoulders and the knees. And then from there, you lower yourself as far down as comfortable, and we'll push back up. Once again, straight line from here to here. Hands right on the edge of the mat or about shoulder width apart. You lower yourself as low as comfortable, press back up. Now for what I'll, I'll go ahead and do a standard push up, but all the same rules apply. and shoulder width apart, feet down. There's ways to do your feet. I personally like to put one on top of the other, but for this, we'll go about as wide as the hands. We'll come down, back up. We'll shoot for 10. While we're down here, we'll go ahead and do a couple, uh, uh, <clears throat> a couple more exercises for your core. So first we'll start with a plank. Um, there's a couple ways to do it. I'll just show two of them. Three, I'll show three of them. The harder, the harder one to do, or I won't say harder, one of the challenging ways to do it is from a push-up position, where we go here and hold for 30 seconds. Another one is also from the knees, but it will also be from the elbows in this position. And then you have your standard plank in this position. For tonight, I'll have to go ahead and do the standard plank for 30 seconds. You want to use the same principle that you use for the push-up, where you want to keep a straight line from the shoulders all the way to the ankle. And to brace your core muscles. Elbows about shoulder width apart. When you're ready to start, you can start on the knees. If you do the standard plank, we'll raise up and we'll count out 30 seconds. Next core exercise we'll do on the back. This one will focus on the abdominal muscles. I'll show you several different exercises to do, and then I'll do the main one that you guys can focus on. One is <clears throat> leg straight. We'll start with the right hand overhead. And what we'll do is we'll come up and try to touch the toe. The knee doesn't, the leg doesn't have to be straight, but the whole point is to activate here in the abdominal muscles. So if you can, we'll sit up, tap, and come down. Modified version of that, we'll bring the knee here, 
tap and come down. I like to do a little more challenging where I'll place my fingers just behind my head, bring one knee here, and as I come up, I'll twist towards the knee. So I'll start in a flat position, twist, tap, tap, and tap. And for anyone who has back problems or anything, we can do what's called the standard crunch. I like to do mine elbows on the shoulders, hands on the shoulders, elbows close to the body, tuck your chin into your body, crunch so that your rib cages move towards your hip bones. Keeping the back flat and safe. If you do these, shoot anywhere from 10 to 20 or whatever number you feel you can do. If you do these, I personally like to do 18 to 20 each side, but for demonstration, I'll do six or seven each side. Then we'll switch, same principle. One foot is down with the heel down, knees up about a 90 degree angle here, fingertips behind the head. Try to touch your knee. If you don't make it, that's fine too. Done. Okay, we got one more for you. Everybody's favorite, but not really. Mountain climbers. Um, anything that will allow you to slide on the carpet, I pick paper plates because most people have paper plates. You can use furniture sliders. If you have a wooden floor, you can use your socks. And then there's another, uh, I won't call it modified, but another version where your feet actually don't slide on the ground. It's almost like you're running. I'll show that one also. Since we're using the plates, I like to put my toes in the center of the plate, as you can see here. We'll come out to a push-up position. Hands about shoulder width apart like with push-ups. Hands come peek them out. And what we'll do here, we'll come up and up. And you can actually do these at a variance of speed. If you want to go slow and go for time, that's fine. If you want to go for a count, you can go a little faster. I'll do some of both just to show a good tempo for both. So for time's sake, I'll do 15 for the time and I'll do 20 for a speed. And that'll be each leg. When you do this, you really want to focus. You'll feel it in the core muscles, but you want to focus. Bring the knees up to the shoulders if you can. Or even if you come halfway up, that's fine. But you should feel your whole mix session nice and tight as you're doing. All right. So, if you're going for speed, we'll do 20 each leg as fast as you can get them out. Along with the speed, you'll actually get a little cardio component with that, which a lot of people like to do. Same rules apply. Hands about shoulder width apart. Push up position. We just go in. You don't want a lot of movement like this to mess with the shoulders and take away the effectiveness of the core part. But we're done. The other version I was talking about, same starting position from here, but as you come up, one leg will come up and go right back. So that there's no sliding involved. That one's a little more taxing, but still just as good for the core. One more core exercise for you. We'll put our mat back out.
got our jug again. This one is called a Turkish Get Up. Has a lot of levels to it. Today we'll do about halfway and come back down. You can grip your jug however you like. Either here with the hand open, close fist with it up. The hand that you have your weight in, that same knee will be up, foot flat. The other leg is straight, arm out to the side. This actually will involve a full sit up, but this hand is gonna aid you as you sit up. So to start, we'll do our sit up. As you do this exercise, this weight stays pointed towards the ceiling the whole time. It's really good for shoulder health. So we'll do our sit up to a sitting position. Hand is right behind you to keep you propped up. Knees here, leg is straight. Push up. Come back down. Use your abs to control your back down. And that's one. <coughs> We'll do, you generally want to do, if you can, up to 10 on each side. So we'll shoot for that. We'll see what happens. That's one. And it helps as you do these. Find a, like a, other exercises we did earlier, find a fixed position. that actually help keep your weight pointed towards the ceiling. Go ahead and switch sides. Arm out. Left knee up. Right leg straight. Sit up. Point towards the ceiling. Nice tall hips. Back down. Under control. So those are a few exercises to help you with your home workout. We'll do a couple of things here for a cool down. Start in a position, doesn't matter as long as you have enough room to do it. Take a big step forward. Right hand down, left hand down, just lower yourself as low as you can. Hold for a few seconds. Twist. And down. Back up. Same thing on the other side. Left hand down. Right hand. Lower yourself. Hold for a few seconds. Twist out. And down. Back up. Another one that we can do. Little wide feet. Keep your chest as tall as you can. Sit into it. Grab your toes. If you need to bring your feet in, nice deep sit. Chest up. This will help open up the hips more. Give you some good hip health, hip flexibility. Nice and tall. And bring it up. Let's do one more for posterity. We'll do our arm swings again.
overhead it. Pull across. Nice firm pull, not too hard. Hold for a few seconds. Open the chest. It's important when you do these nice, even breathing. Helps to slow your heart rate down, cool the body down. Big deep breaths. Open up. Come to one knee. Hand overhead. Just reach across. Hold for a few seconds. Come up. Switch sides. Should feel a good stretch from the shoulder all the way down. Come down. Now we'll go to a seated position. I like to turn my chest towards one knee. Doesn't matter which one. Keeping your back tall, chest tall, nice and straight. And we'll just pull towards the knees comfortably as you can. If you feel any pull in the knees, definitely stop before that, and that's fine. All that's just telling you is you're tight in the hips, and you don't have to go, just go as far as your body will allow. Don't push it too much. I like to put my hand under my foot to give me a little more leverage to pull. We'll go to about here. Should feel a good stretch in the hip area. Nice deep breaths. Come up. A few deep breaths. Same thing on the other side. Hands under the foot. Do a nice pull. If the floor happens to bother the ankle that's closest to the ground, I'll put my fingers underneath the ankle help support. If you have a mat, you can use that too. That should work. Nice pull, keeping everything straight. Should feel a good stretch in this area here. workout with me today. Thanks for joining me.